Manchester United exploring £42 million deal for Antonio Silva from Benfica. Two players close to agreeing exits from the club and new left-back targets revealed. These are some of the topics we will be discussing on this episode. But before we get into that, please smash a like on today's video. Let's try and see a thousand likes on this show. And if this is your first time watching, please do subscribe to the channel. I'm live every single day at 8.30, 1.30 and 6. Make sure you get involved for all of your latest Manchester United transfer news and talk. Right, I want to start the show off by talking about the left-back situation. Now, I think we can all agree that Manchester United are desperately crying out to strengthen in the left-back position. Obviously, Luke Shaw injured for most of last season. Malasia disappeared off the face of the earth. And we really, really struggled in that area, didn't we? We had Amrabat playing there. I think we had Lindelof playing there. Like, it was a mess. But there's a report coming out uh, in the last couple of minutes saying that apparently Manchester United are looking at four different options for the left back position. So I'm going to go through them all really, really quickly. And then I'm going to ask you to get involved and let me know your opinion. So the first option is Gents Archie Brown. And I'm going to be honest, this isn't really someone that I'm that familiar with before obviously hearing the name and going and doing some research. 22 years of age. Uh, English left back currently playing, as I said, for Ghent in the Belgian league, apparently available this summer for around five to 10 million. So he's seen as a cheap option. Uh, he moved to Ghent a couple of years ago from Birmingham. Uh, the next player on the list is Feyenoord's David Hanko, 26 years of age. Very, very good defender. Very versatile. Can play at left back, left sided centre back and right sided centre back is available for around 20 to 30 million euros. So slightly more expensive than uh, Archie Brown. But David Hanko is an international player. He was obviously uh, part of Slovakia's team at the Euros. So a very, very good option there. Uh, and then the third option is Crystal Palace's Tirek Mitchell, who again is somebody that I'm not that familiar with. I've seen him a couple of times uh, in the Premier League for Crystal Palace, but he's not maybe the most exciting name there. 24 years of age, another English player. Um, available for somewhere around 25 million euros. So quite expensive. And then the, uh, the, fourth, the fourth option we've got is someone that we will all know, and that is Sergio Reguilon. Available this summer for around 5 million. Very cheap option. Probably the most least exciting option on that list, but he ticks the boxes, has played at Man United before, one year left of his deal and available for not very much money. But I want you to let me know who should Manchester United sign as the new left back this summer. My 100% preference is David Hanko. I think he'd be unbelievable. Like he's actually a really, really good player and he would solve so many problems because he is a centre back, but can play at left back as well. Um, and I think he would actually tick two boxes because it would make the centre back situation a little bit less of a priority then because you'd have a player who is comfortable at left back and left sided centre back and right sided centre back. But that would be my option. Uh, obviously, I want you to let me know in the comment section who should Manchester United sign as the new left back this summer. Um, and also, I want you to let me know if you think we actually need a new left back. I 100% think we do, but obviously, let me know your thoughts below. Uh, the next bit of news I've got for you is on a new set piece coach, which I think is really, really important because we've been terrible at set pieces for years. We never score from them and we always concede from them. Obviously, uh, the set-piece coach recently left, didn't he? He moved to America. I can't remember his name, but he's gone anyway. And we are just about to appoint. Uh, the guy's name is Andreas Georgson. Uh, he's currently the manager of Lielstrom. So he's actually a manager, but previously he was a set-piece coach. So we've got Rennie Hark from Go Ahead Eagles, who was a manager. We've got Ruud van Nisseroy, who was obviously the manager of PSV. Uh, was, you know, offered jobs at Burnley and a couple of other clubs. And now we've got the Lielstrom manager. So we've not only got Eric Ten Hag, we've got three people who prior to joining Manchester United were actually the top managers at their respective clubs. So I think this is a really good appointment. I watched a couple of videos on him. Apparently he's one of the best uh, set-piece coaches around. He's worked with Jason Wilcox in the past before. So it's definitely a big tick for me. And I know most people are like, I only care about transfers, but... It's all. What's the point in having good players if you don't have good coaches? And I think our coaching department has been seriously behind over the last decade. And, and that's probably why we've struggled in certain areas. Obviously, the recruitment's been bad. We've overspent on players. But if you don't have the best in class coaching them, then it, it doesn't really matter who you have, does it? Um, so, yeah, that's that bit of news for you, which I think is really, really positive. He's apparently going to join in the next couple of days. And then the next story I've got for you is on Matthias De Ligt. This is coming out from Sky Sports in the last couple of minutes. And the headline is that Bayern Munich still 
want to sell Matthias de Ligt to Manchester United this summer, but currently there is a big gap in valuations between the two clubs. It says Bayern need to sell this summer so they can pursue a deal for Jonathan Tarr. As it stands, Manchester United's highest bid was £25 million. Bayern Munich are still asking for £42 million plus add-ons, which I think is, I've said many, many times, I think is ridiculous. I think it's way too much money for a player who, let's be honest, they want to get rid of a player that they've already found the replacement for and a player that sits on the bench because he's injured most of the time. So 25 million sounds about right to me, but Man United still seem to want to get a deal done. Hopefully soon, because we desperately need a new centre-back. I just hope it's nowhere near the 42 million pound asking price, which I don't think it will be. But obviously you can let me know in the comment section, are you still 100% focused on Matthias De Ligt or should we be looking elsewhere? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Sky Sports are also reporting that Manchester United are keeping a close eye on Jared Branthwaite. Apparently Branthwaite has rejected a new deal at Everton so there is some murmurs that apparently Manchester United think they might be able to go back in for Branthwaite and get him but again it all boils down to money. We had a £35 million bid rejected then a £45 million bid rejected and now it's whether Manchester United want to go back in for a third and final bid. We'll wait and see whether that does materialise. Uh, the next two stories I've got for you on outgoings. So it looks like Hannibal Mejbri is going to leave the club. He is now in advanced talks to leave and join Rangers. It says it's going to be a loan deal, which I don't understand because he's only got a year left of his contract. So I don't know. And I think we should be getting some money for him. Like if this was a Man City or an Arsenal, we'd be getting 5, 10 million for Hannibal Mejbri. Arsenal just sold Emil Smith-Rowe for £35 million to Fulham. He's barely played football for two years. So we should be able to get 5 to £10 million for Hannibal, in my opinion. But maybe you think I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I think we should be able to. And then the other player that looks like he's on the way out is uh, Facundo Pellistri. Apparently, he is in talks with Panintiarcos over a permanent deal. Again, very, very strange. I think he could do better than move into the Greek league. Uh, no disrespect to the Greek league, but this guy is starting every every game for Uruguay at international level. He's still very, very young. And Panintiarkos finished 10th in, in the Greek league last season. So it's not like they're, you know, high flyers in the Greek league. It's like a mid-table Greek team, but maybe that's just his level. I don't know. And apparently he wants to go there. So I wish him all the best. Uh, transfer fee-wise, it's going to be something similar to, to Hannibal. It should be around 5 to 10 million. That's what's being discussed. So I'll keep you updated on that one. And then the third player who looks set to leave in the coming weeks is Scott McTominay. This is coming up from Sky Sports again in the last couple of minutes. They're reporting that Fulham are still working on a deal to sign Scott McTominay this summer. And every expectation is that they will return to Manchester United in the near future with an improved offer. So for anybody who's unaware, Manchester United rejected a £17 million bid from Fulham, uh, I think it was last week, for Scott McTominay. And when you think that they just paid 35 for Emil Smith-Rowe, we should 100% be rejecting that. If Emil Smith-Rowe is worth 35 million to Fulham, then McTominay is easily worth 30 million to us. You know, he scored 10 goals in the Premier League last season. Emil Smith-Rowe has barely kicked a football for two years. So yeah, 30 million minimum. It probably should be more based on what they've just paid for Smith-Rowe. But yeah, 30 million would be the magic figure. And that's apparently what Manchester United are asking for. So I'll keep you updated on that one. Uh, but it does look like Scott McTominay will be leaving. It's just a case of negotiating the deal to suit all parties. And then the final story I've got for you, which is obviously the biggest one of the video, is on Antonio Silva. So this is being reported by multiple different Portuguese outlets in the last couple of minutes that apparently Manchester United have approached Benfica over the potential deal for Antonio Silva as they see him as a cut price option to Jared Branthwaite. Now, Antonio Silva is an unbelievable player. Uh, I would love to see him at Manchester United. Had a great season for Benfica last year. Only 20 years of age. Fits the profile of what Ineos are trying to, to do at Manchester United. And the good thing about him is he can play as a left-sided centre-back and as a right-sided centre-back. So would be a really, really welcomed addition to the squad. Now, you're probably sat there thinking, well, what about his release clause? So he has a release clause of £84 million, which let's all agree is ridiculous. There's no way he's worth that. But apparently Benfica have told Manchester United, this is what this Portuguese report says, they'd be willing to let Silva go for an offer of £42 million or more. So it would have to be £42 million uh, guaranteed, plus some sort of add-ons, maybe 10, 15 million in add-ons. And I think if we could do that, it would be an unbelievable signing for Manchester United. When you think that we then have Martinez, uh, Silva and Lenny Yoro as our three kind of main centre-backs, 
Maguire's probably going to hang around for a year. And then you've got Johnny Evans as the fifth choice. So I would be happy with that. I think he would be a really, really solid signing. And I would much rather see Antonio Silva for 42 million than uh, De Ligt for 42 million. But you can have your say. Let me know in the comment section, who would you go for? Uh, I'm going to wrap the video up here. Thank you very much for joining me. Please make sure to smash a like and subscribe to the channel on your way out. This has been Daily Red Devil. I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.